Shabbat Shalom. In Parashat Shmini, we hear about the eighth day. This is the culmination of the dedication of the Mishkan, the dedication of the tabernacle, the sanctuary, after chapters and chapters describing how it should be constructed, what should go in it, and where, and how, after chapters describing the rites and rituals by which the sanctuary would be inaugurated and set up and sanctified, on the eighth day, it is finally um, made operational, okay? And, and, and uh, what, what a wonderful culminating experience uh, of, of weeks and weeks of preparation. Uh, and yet that moment famously is marred by the tragic deaths of Ar- Nadav and Avihu, two sons of, of Aaron. And the Torah describes uh, their death as the consequence of their bringing um, uh, some sort of uh, zara asher lo a strange fire that was not commanded, was, was offered on their, on their fire pans. And in contrast to chapter after chapter of everyone doing precisely what they had been instructed to do, Nadav and Avihu, they, um, they, they, they break forth and they do something uncommanded. Uh, and this brings about their own deaths. And this is calmly understood to be um, a lesson about the need for, for following the rules, even when one might otherwise be tempted to, to break through out of a perhaps very sincere desire to, to worship God as they, everyone around them was doing, as they saw uh, their father Aaron serving uh, in the Mishkan. They wanted to serve in the same way um, as God's presence was resting on the Mishkan and there was this moment of revelation. They wanted to take part in a more direct way and the Torah is saying, and warning us, no, like especially in the realm of the sacred, uh, there's a need to stay within uh, within the rules. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Mishkan, the, the, the temple as well, uh, really every, every sacred location, every encounter with sanctity is a, is a merging of realms. It, it's a meeting point of heaven and earth. And as boundaries are crossed, there's a need to reinforce boundaries. And this parsha is all about boundaries. Uh, the, the second part of the weekly Torah portion describes all the kosher species. And in this way, all of creation, all, all life forms are divided. Those you eat, those you don't eat, those that have fins, those that chew their cud, those that have split hooves. Everything is put into categories. Uh, and that's how we make sense of the world. That's how we operate within the world. That's how we have limits. Uh, and that's how we can navigate um, in a world that uh, contains uh, elements of the sacred, which are, by definition, elements of danger. But there's another, there's another side to that coin, and just a few verses after, the Torah describes the death of Nadav and Nabihu. The Torah says that Moshe um, inquired about this remaining goat, okay, this sin offering that um, had had been burned and, and as part of the inaugural sacrifices, but had not yet been eaten. And he turns to Aaron and says, you're, you're, you're in, the, in this moment of mourning, in, in the shock that you're in, you, you neglected your um, responsibilities as Kohen. You, you haven't continued to eat the sacrifice that was brought earlier in the day. And the Torah says Moshe's angry. Um, Why didn't you eat it? What's going on? And Aaron responds to Moshe and says, Given everything that happened today, the state I'm in, what's befallen me, I'm in acute mourning. Had I gone ahead and eaten? Would, would, would God have approved of that? That's what he wanted. He wanted, would want somebody in acute mourning to go ahead and, and eat a korban as though nothing untoward had occurred, as though nothing tragic had occurred, as though there was no cause for mourning. Is that really what God desires? And that, that satisfies Moshe. And this is an origin for the laws of mourning. There are certain mitzvot that we don't do, certain mitzvot we cannot do in a state of acute mourning. Uh, and there are other halachic restrictions for, for shiva, for shloshim, for all of the stages of mourning by which we respond to something tragic, a rupture in our lives that occurs you know, in the death of a, of a loved one. And then we, we are gradually rehabilitated into a normal life of community, a life of Torah and mitzvot. 
But Aaron is saying to Moshe in this moment, God really wants that. He's saying to Moshe, does God really want me to be a robot who can go about my life and do mitzvot and eat things and offer things and go here and go there uh, with no regard to what's occurring in my life? And the laws of mourning come and say, actually, we are supposed to be impacted by our feelings. There are events that occur in the world, in the orbit of our families. They impact us. And because they impact us, that is by necessity going to shift how we perform certain mitzvot, our access even, our ability to perform certain mitzvot. And that's, that's the two halves of the coin. That's how, we, um, that's how we operate in the world. We have boundaries that need to be maintained. We generally don't allow people overcome by uh, even sincere desire to go and do mitzvot that aren't appropriate for them in the wrong time, in the wrong place, um, in the wrong way. And yet, we also recognize the laws of mourning being just one very obvious and dramatic and significant example of this, uh, that not every day is like another. There are circumstances that are meant to impact us. We're meant to feel things and experience things. Uh, and, and those feelings necessitate a different relationship with the world, even a different way of interacting, interacting with God. Um, so I think this, that this tragic episode and some of the subtle details around it are actually paradigmatic for, you know, a hundred other big stories and small stories we could tell about, about Jewish life. I think there are, you know, many examples you can think of in your own personal lives. I think in our lives as a community, we have these challenges. Uh, sometimes we need to be told the boundaries are really, really important. We have to stay within the boundaries. Other times we need to be told, no, like you're meant to feel things and those feelings have to make a difference. Um, from a vantage point of this past 12, 13, 14 months that we've experienced as a community, I think the modern Orthodox community, and I don't mean our shul per se, but broadly speaking, uh, shuls like our own, similar to our own, all across the world, uh, we've had a double dose of rules and regulations. We have uh, the rules and regulations of Jewish law, of halakha. We have not been able to fully pivot towards uh, Zoom prayers and uh, use the use of electronic communications on Shabbat as other religions have and as other Jewish um, denominations have done um, because of those boundaries of halakha that we believe in because they ultimately are traced back to God and we also ultimately believe in the long run they lead to flourishing Jewish communities. And we have the additional burden, of course, of caring about science and medicine and public health and taking those guidelines with the utmost seriousness, uh, unlike uh, some other um, religious groups uh, within the Jewish community, outside the Jewish community, who have um, more robustly maintained their, their pre-COVID uh, way of life. And with that double burden, we, we feel all of those boundaries that this Parsha reinforces. And when we feel constrained, it doesn't matter, okay? especially in the realm of the holy. When the stakes are so high, you've got to follow the rules. And as modern Orthodox Jews, we have twice as many rules we need to abide by. Uh, but we're also allowed uh, to feel things, or meant to feel things. And I think right now, Parsha Shmini, okay, as we are in the spring of 5781, uh, I think the feelings that we should be feeling are, are yearning to reconnect, yearning to return to shul uh, as soon as we feel that it's uh, appropriate to do so and safe to do so. And there's a public health decision, and right now the public health decision is uh, up to 50 at a time can return to shul with uh, masking and distancing. Uh, and then there's a personal decision, which you have to figure out for yourself. Uh, when do you feel ready uh, to come back to shul, um, whether with your family or by yourself, and when is that going to be? But the shul's waiting for you, uh, and, and I hope you're missing the shul, and I hope you're, you're planning on when and how uh, you'll be able to return. Uh, and that, that's a feeling I think we are entitled to feel. Like that's a feeling I want to encourage you to develop and lean into and cultivate, because uh, ultimately that feeling is going to be really important for our community's revival uh, in the coming in the coming months. I wish you all a Shabbat Shalom. Look forward to seeing you uh, here and there and uh, um, wherever that may be. Goodbye.